right. Just waiting for a few more to join in. Welcome all that are on board thus far. And uh, just a quick recap here in the meantime. Um, I'm Coach Mike of Mind Movement and welcome you to another segment of Martial Motion. Um, today will be our level two class. So we'll be, again, touching on um, different aspects of combat, okay? Um, so two of them, um, which we pretty much, um, I would say is our, your median, would be uh, ground and standing up, okay? So um, there are many different aspects to explore, you know, because I also want to explore the mind-body connection as well, okay? But I also want to connect the emphasis with how we relate to the ground, okay? Because whether we're on the ground or standing up, that is where our drive and force comes from, okay? Not to mention our balance, control, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And uh, balance in martial arts in, can be a tricky thing because sometimes our balances are somewhere on the end and in the middle of extremes, right? So if I'm extending so much in one area, I have to extend the opposite area just to kind of keep balance, okay? So those that have uh, joined you know, my first few classes or any martial arts class could possibly gain uh, just a bit of uh, knowledge from that aspect, right? So the fact that if I'm throwing with a lot of force or doing anything with a lot of force, I need something to counter that force, okay? So, um, again, we'll be starting in about, say, 30 seconds, just give me some time to distract on in. I know sometimes when we're trying to make timely appointments and everything these days, right, we have to make extra time to prepare ourselves, clean our hands, right, keep our hands out of our faces and so forth, right? So just keeping awareness and mindfulness in all walks of life. All right. Okay. And an official welcome. Okay. Coach Mike, Mind Movements, here for Martial Motion. Okay. This is a level two class um, for our Wednesday. We will be going Monday, level one, Wednesday's level two, and Saturday's level three. Okay. And all will be meeting at 3 o'clock p.m here Eastern time. Okay, so what we are going to do here is we're actually going to go ahead and start with groundwork this time, all right? So I want to actually adjust my camera here and just to give you a frame of reference, those that are new here, okay, I can wear socks, right? I prefer as minimal as possible, so I'm working with a 10 by 10 amount of space relatively socks or what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my socks because I want to make sure that I can get as acclimated and related to the surface of the ground as possible. Thus being mindful of my very steps about. Okay. So you can use a yoga mat if you need to. Okay. Um that would be definitely more so for prone positions, but for now I want to make sure that we have socks, optional yoga mats preferred and water is required right so i have that water and possibly even a towel on deck okay so we're going to go ahead and get started now okay so i want to go ahead and get started with here is just a couple of push-ups okay so we all know the standard push-up here right because i want to make sure that we actually have good form in a push-up before we start getting into things that are a little bit um somewhat related to it right but a bit more mobile okay so here, I'm going to drink. Make sure I'm keeping my hands. I'll go facing you first, hands just beneath the shoulders. And what I want to do is make sure I have a nice, good external rotation in my shoulders. Now, what does that mean? Right, my shoulders are turning in outwards fashion, so the inside of my elbows are pointed up, right, and my feet hips width apart, feet hips width, and my hands are shoulders width. Okay, I'm keeping a nice straight back, keeping my core nice and tight, flat butt, flat. Gut. Okay, so now I'll meet you laterally so I can see myself. And here we go. We're going to bring the arms inside, very close to the body, right? And I'm facing you, but you go ahead and pick straight ahead, looking in a triangular fashion straight ahead of your two hands with your vision. So your vision will be your third point. That's two. Here we go now, just this speed, keeping those elbows in nice and tight. Nice. Facing you again, so you can see where my elbows are. In nice and tight. 
and back up. Let's go for five more. Head slightly tilted up, back is nice and straight, gut and butt tucked. Very nice. Okay, we're just gonna walk into a standing position. Okay, left foot, right foot. We're just gonna rise up. Looks like now we're gonna come into picture here. Now we're gonna go into an in place lunge. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is step back, place this one knee on the ground, step back, place the other knee down, and then back up. One, two. That's two. Down, down, up, up. Down, down, up, up. Now all the while, I'm trying to keep my back nice and straight. We can keep the arms up. Trying to keep that back nice and straight. Nice. Trying your best not to waver side to side. Especially for those that are using bare floor, be very careful on how my knees meet the ground. Okay, now let's go back down to the ground. For those that are here last week, we're gonna go into those kick throughs. Okay, so again, I'm in that push up position, but this time I'm gonna bring my knees. And closer to my elbows. That's nice. almost like in a, uh, in a bit of a cat cow position. Holding them on the balls of my feet here, not the tops of my feet. Knees hovering about the ground. I'm going to hop up in the sky, land on one foot, and kick through to that side. And hop up and kick through. Up, land opposite foot, kick through opposite side. And here you'll notice a pivot in the foot as I kick through as well. Now I'm rising up high and landing soft as I can. So what that takes is engagement in my core to land nice and soft. Toes and heels facing east-west. Let's keep going. And notice, protecting my head and my body. Keep going along. We go 30 more seconds. So heel facing east west. Now as I'm doing this, keeping that same concept of as I attack one way, I protect another. So while one hand is facing me out, the other hand close to my head, arm close to my body. Kicking straight out, my leg parallel to the ground, up high, laying soft, and time. Okay, let's go. Standing upright, we're gonna go into a set of jumping jacks with intermittent high knees. Starting with high knees in a marching fashion, and go up, up, down, down. I'll say which arm goes up and which leg goes up. Left arm up, right leg up. Right arm up, left leg up. Try to bring those thighs up higher with each one. And let's go into jumping jacks. Again, nice and light on the feet. And now let's go ahead and pick up the pace on those high knees. Keep those knees in. Don't let them flare out to the side just yet. Those that have been with me for a while, you know there is a purpose for that form. And switch. Lateral. Open the arms. Even clap. Feet together. Hands together. Apart, apart, together, together. And back to those high knees. Again, making sure those arms are nice and tight. And it's still bent, so I'm moving 
at the shoulder. Keep moving. Nice, moving, moving, moving. Excellent, and switch. This time, front legs. Try to keep the arms in line with the shoulders and legs in line with the hips. Back to those high knees. Arms are nice and tight, faster. Yes, making sure you keep those thighs as high up as you can. Going, going, going. And switch. Crisscross. One foot in front, then switch the other foot in front. One arm above, switch the other arm above. You can even clap. And time. Deep squat. Feet slightly wide and hips width apart. And drop the butt slowly down to the floor. I'm just gonna allow the lower back to open up and just hang out in this position. I'll move lateral. Nice, nice and bent. The back, let the head hang. Get those arms inside the inner thigh. And now let's press those palms together for that prayer squat. Now as I press my palms together, I begin to stretch my wrists. And my back begins to straighten. Head slightly tilted up. Three more big inhalations through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Make sure we're hitting the base and back of those lungs. Last one, deeper breath and slow release. Very nice. Okay, now from here, we're going to go into that crow pose that we worked on last week. So I'm going to bring hands outside and I'll raise my heels off of the ground. Hands outside of my shoulders width apart. I'll turn face you. So my arms are still on my inner thigh. And I'm just balancing myself here, right? I'm using my arms as a base. My arms are slightly bent to the elbow. I'm just going to play with bringing my feet off of the ground. Some of us may not have most control here. That's fine. Go one foot at a time even. I'm just gonna take this minute to see how long we can sit in this position, okay? Here you can go arms wider for wider, better base. You can go arms a little narrower for a bit of a challenge. Make sure the things are slightly splayed apart. And my head comes past my hands, thus creating what we spoke of earlier, that counterbalance. Draw the heels into the butt, you can point the foot, demi point the foot, whatever works for you. Okay, again, if you fall out, try and go back in. All right, readjusting, getting those arms in between thighs. As we hang here, see if we can settle into a good groin stretch here, too. All right, arms begin to bend more, legs begin to flare a bit wider, heels towards the butt. 20 seconds. Again, that 20 seconds could be whatever it means for you. If you need to come out and start again, that's fine as well. 10 seconds. And time. Tuck in the toes. Back to feet, slightly wider, hips width apart, toes pointed. 45 degrees from center, 90 degrees apart from each other. Back into that deep squat. Nice. And from here, let the head hang and let the butt rise. Heel toe, toes in, heel in, toes in. So your feet are hips width apart. Again, let the head hang nice and heavy as well as the arms. And rotating the hips back. Good posterior tilt. Again, let the head and arms hang really heavy. Head is the last to rise. Thumbs cross. I raise up, 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 up. Or 
big back bend. Nice. And sweep the arms out to the side. Very nice. Okay, now let's go into a bit of a stretch here. So I'm gonna go first into my sumo squat. I'm gonna drop real low, 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 but thighs parallel to the ground. Bring my elbows in between my thighs. Further stretch at the groin. And heel toe, heel toe, walk the feet out this time. I go down to my right side, stretching my left leg, toes up, full flex. Good stretch in the hamstring. And I switch. Feet should be in the right position to just go for a single switch without adjusting the feet too much. My bent leg heel comes towards my butt. My foot is flexed the opposite side. Switch again. Good balance. Foot flex. Internal rotation at the hip. Knee and toes facing straight ahead of you. Posture stays upright. Try to lean off to the side. Feel that mobility opening up in that outer hip and switch. Flex the foot and turn the hip. Posture stays upright. And we switch into a lunge. Rotate, rotate to the right. Arms are both on the inside of that right leg. Head is up and hips down and neutral. So it should be on the same level. They shouldn't be off kilter, right? Same level. What helps that is that rotation, left heel pointed up towards the sky, head up as well. Okay, let's bring the right elbow down towards the ground. Bring the shoulder past the thigh. And now let's twist the opposite direction. Pointing straight up to the sky, almost like a hat in one pose. Let's get one more good breath and sink into that twist. As the fingers still point up. And we switch. Hand down. Go ahead and walk those feet. Pivot, 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 pivot. All the while. Feet should be in the place they need to be. Adjust if you need to. Hands in between thighs, heads up, hips down. Keep that back leg nice and straight. Don't bend the knee. If anything, you want to bring the hip down towards the ground. Very nice. Now let's bring that left elbow in or elbow down towards the ground. Don't touch the hand, just the elbow if you can. All right, and we twist the opposite way. Keep your vision on a point straight up to the sky. Not wavering with your breath. One more exhalation, twist. And that hand comes back down and we begin to walk our hands to the center. And here we're gonna go into a split. Try to keep the heels, even the inner, entire inner foot down on the ground as we work our way as close as we can to what a split means to us, right? Doesn't mean we need to sit a bust all the way down to the ground. Okay, we'll work our way into it. I wanna walk my hands slightly ahead of my shoulders. Okay, I'll go lateral view for you. you. Keep my legs as straight as I can. Chin to my chest, and I dive through. And watch as my head rises, my hips still begin to go down. And let's go for four more. I push back into that split, test my range. Once I feel too much strain, I dive out of it. Keep those elbows in nice and tight like we did our push-ups earlier. Three more. Slide and dive. Last one, take the breath in, sink into that split and dive out of it with a good exhalation. And let those hips hang nice and heavy. Very nice. Okay. And let's work your way up onto your feet as best you can. Go heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. Nice. And raise up as you will. You can come up one vertebrae at a time. And dive back or here. And just interlace the fingers. Flip the palms up towards the sky. I'll go down just so you can see what my hands are doing. Keep the head in between your arms. Arms straight. Engage straight ahead of you. And sweep the arms slowly down to the side. And time. 
Let's go for our first water break. Always keep in mind of how important it is to be hydrated, especially in these upcoming warmer months. Okay, back in in 10 seconds. Okay, back to stand up. Hey, so I know I'm taking my feet a little bit out of the range here, but what I'm gonna do, if you see my knee, whichever direction my knee is pointing, that's where my toes should be pointing, okay? And I really letting those two parts of my legs waver from one another. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my feet slightly wider than the hips width apart, and they're gonna stay neutral. I'm not gonna be in a staggered position as for our stand up fighting position, our two o'clock or our 10 o'clock stance, right? I'm gonna stand feet just across from each other, both toes facing forward. I'm gonna keep both hands up. Let's get back into those pivots, okay? So I'm gonna turn, heel up with my right, as I punch with my right across my body, and back to my head, twist again. So essentially, what we're doing here. We're throwing crosses with both sides. Now, when I'm orthodox or right handed, I tend to go with my right hand as my cross because it is in my rear as well as my foot. So it has more time and distance to develop power through momentum. Twisting, again, turning that heel off the ground, but still keeping connected with the ball of the foot. Start to feel the connection in the hips as well, the abs, shoulders. No one punch is going to be the same. So play with your range a bit. Maybe stretch out a little more, extend a little more, twist a little more, maybe a little more speed. Always being mindful of the martial mindset, right? You need to make sure that I have protection as well, okay? Anytime I'm engaging with offense. All right, keep going. And while you keep twisting and turning and punching, be mindful of the formation of my fists, okay? So fingers together, not too tight. Ball them up, okay, to a nice square fist. And I'm gonna bring my thumbs on the outer two fingers near the thumb, okay? I want that nice square wrist and straight wrist. Main point of contact, right? If you're able to make contact, the first two knuckles more so than the last two, okay? That's why they're reinforced with that thumb. Keep them nice and powerful, okay? Still going, twisting. Twisting at the hips, opening up. Nice, and time. Now we're gonna go into our front kicks, okay? So I'll go facing laterally for now, okay? So. Left, okay, right, left, right. Again, here's where we go into our stance. Okay, feet together. If I'm ready, turn my right foot out 45 degrees. Those are my knees pointed out 45 degrees. So that means my toes are as well. I'm gonna go on the edge, outer edge of my foot and slide along that 45 degree plane the opposite direction. Okay, so I'll do this one more time. See my feet. Okay, toes together, and if I'm riding, right hand, right foot, turns out 45 degrees. Edge of the foot, outer edge of the foot to the ground, I'm just gonna sweep along that 45 degree plane behind me, so my hips are, or sorry, my feet are hips with apart. Okay, that's my stance, if I'm a righty. If I'm a lefty, it's the opposite, okay? My feet, or hands on the clock, it would be 10 o'clock. Two o'clock, 10 o'clock, two o'clock, you get it. Okay, so now front kick, left front kick, right front kick. Okay, bending my knees slightly, spinning my hips forward and my shoulders back. Again, that same thing we spoke about earlier, counterbalancing. <sighs> counterbalance is not just with my hips and shoulders, but also with my hand. Hand goes down. <sighs> to make sure I have good retraction 
off of my extension. Okay, notice my shoulders going slightly back with each one. Keep going. Let's keep all saying left and right or right and left, depending on what your preferred stance is. Hips slightly forward, shoulders slightly back. Okay, if I were not to do so, then a lot of my energy would fall forward, right? And then I get closer to danger, okay? Closer to what it is I'm attacking. What am I hitting with? I'm hitting with the bottom of the foot and preferably the ball of the foot, because thereby I have more extension than just my heel alone, right? Notice there's more extension when I hit with the ball of the foot. And of course, being mindful that I flex my toes towards my knee, okay? Hips forward, shoulders back. Now let's go ahead and add some punches, okay? Jab, cross, lead hand, backhand, cross, 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 cross my body. Left teeth or front kick, right teeth. Jab, cross. Notice the drive behind that cross. That heel comes off the ground, but the ball doesn't. Jab, cross. Left kick, left hand comes down. Right kick, right hand comes down. As I shift the weight on my plant leg for balance. Nice. We'll go the opposite stance now. Right, left, right, left. Try to keep really good and strong in my core, but still have a bit of looseness for mobility. Nice. And time. Now. What we're going to do is get reacclimated to the round kick. Okay, so I'm going to go back and set jab cross again. I'm going to throw the right kick in a rounded fashion, hence the name. Okay, so here comes my jab cross. This time I'm going to go for a bit of rotation. Okay, on that plant leg. Jab cross, kick. Now, if I can, right, another reason why I like to use a better, uh, relatively slicker surface, right, be it hardwood or linoleum, sometimes even marble, right? Yeah, but you know, things, we don't want to be too hard on our bodies, right? Because we want to make sure we toughen our bodies before we hurt ourselves, right? So, okay, so here I'm going with my jab cross. Jab, cross, okay, one's away, the other one's home to protect. Cross, I'm gonna swing that arm down and pivot on my left and swing my leg around and keep that continuous motion, right? That centrifugal force. Swinging the arm right alongside the leg. We're trying to stay in all five toes with my left, okay? Let's keep going for that, jab, cross. Kick. Jab, cross. Heel comes off the ground. Pivot. Full turn, okay? If you can't do the full turn, how about we do just half a turn, 180. Jab, cross, kick. Jab, cross. Kick. Jab, cross, kick. And all the while, I'm imagining something right in center that I'm hitting with my kick. And what do I kick with? My shin more so than my foot. Now, for those who are a bit more advanced on this one, right? Okay, making sure we're actually kicking over something. Uh -huh. I have here, right? A nice object here for you, okay? So just making sure that we are getting some height to our kicks. Jab, cross, pivot. Okay, jab, cross, kick. Just a few more. Now the more speed that I throw with, right, if I pick up the speed, usually I can keep a little bit more balance, right? The slower I go, the harder it is, right? Which we'll go into a little bit later. One eighty turn. Jack cross. One eighty turn. 
and time. Now, what we're going to do is go back into that switch motion. Now, I want to like touch on the switch motion a bit. Okay, so when I switch my stance from my 10 o'clock stance, which is my right stance, to my 10 o'clock stance, right? From two to 10, right? But I didn't say two, it's two to 10. Okay, so my feet are like their hands on the clock. That's when I add power to so now my left leg. Okay, of course, it'd be the opposite if you are left dominant. Okay, I'll be switching from 10 to 2 to bring power to my right leg. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is do the same drill from before, right? But now this time I'm going to add my left. Okay, jab cross. One, two. Okay, I only went 180. Okay, now I'm going to go for my jab cross. I'm going to go lateral view so you can see better. Just switching my feet. Jab cross. Left slides back, right comes forward, thus adding that momentum, right? I'm shifting the weight from one leg to the other. Left comes slightly back, so my right steps forward as much as I need to to track the object down. So I step forward, and all the while, as I step forward, look what's happening. My left heel is to leave the ground, adding propulsion through the ball of my foot, and thus power through my round kick, okay? So again, we're gonna go into that switch kick again, okay? Jab cross, one, two, left back, right forward. And this is all in the same timing, right? One step behind another, keeping that continuity to have more momentum, okay? Jab cross, one, two, left back, right forward. Adding momentum to the kick, okay? Now putting it all together. Jab cross, right kick, 180. Jab cross, switch and turning, okay? Now again, those that can go for the full pivot, go for it for each one, okay? Here we go, two minutes. Ready, ready, ready. And go. Now it's time to start putting them that speed, right? A bit more speed into our combinations as well, right? Speed, speed, speed. Turn those hips over, right? Jab cross, right kick. Nice. Jab cross, switch. Left back, right forward, left kick. Try to turn all the way back around to that left stance. Left foot forward, jab, cross. Jab, cross, switch. One, two, three is the kick. Jab, cross, 180. Jab, cross, 180. Back in front. So it's gonna be a slight adjustment to come right back instead of either two o'clock or 10 o'clock stance, jab, cross, kick, jab, cross, switch, kick, nice, switch back to my stance, All right, faster, So I have to pick up that height a little bit, right? You can kick a little higher, uh, losing a bit of balance. Try and bring that foot past the hip threshold a little bit higher, right? Let's get a little bit more to our hamstrings and our adductors. Making sure we keep in control on the descension down. Halfway there. Switch. Nice. Always be mindful on how we meet the ground. All five toes met to the ground. So we're not twisting and falling off the edge of our foot. Jab cross. Jab cross. Jab cross. Right kick. Full turn. Jab cross. Switch kick. Try to go for that full turn. Back into your stance. Making sure that middle point right there, my shins crossing threshold, almost like there's an imaginary pipe there made of styrofoam. <laughs> Not, not of not of uh, metal, right? Here, so kicking through that threshold, right? Kicking through that threshold with the shin and time. Okay, let's go down the sprawls, guys. Okay, getting back to the ground. Okay, I drop to that deep squat. Hands to the ground. Okay, both legs back, hips down. Now use that propulsion to pop right back up onto my feet. Okay, going for ten. Ready and go. One. Two, three, 
pull. Five. Keeping that momentum. Six, stand all the way up. Eight. Nine. Be mindful of your surroundings. And time. Water. Back in 30 seconds. Okay, if you're back a little bit early, let's sit low. Any version of that deep squat is good. Let's open up that lower back, right? You're trying to rest out the hips. I can go heels off the ground. Good place to kind of comfortably sit, good balance. Okay, but for that true deep prayer squat, I'm gonna go heels down. Get your all corners of the foot and med to the ground. Okay. Again, just allowing those back ones open up. All right, now I want to go back into that horse stance. Okay, so what I'm going to do is bring my feet parallel to one another and slightly wider than hips apart. Okay, now what I'm going to do is drop my butt just low enough to where my thighs are parallel to the ground. Low, 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 low. Nice. When my thighs are really engaged, get a bit of internal rotation right there in the thighs, right? Really trying to make sure that all four corners of my feet are met to the ground. You keep your back as upright as possible, straight. Glutes engaged, thighs engaged. Let's open up those wrists, okay? So stay in that position. We're only going 30 seconds. Stay in that position, right? I want to make sure we open our hands up and it's going to circular fashion. Close the hands, palms up, and open the hands, palm down, close and palm up. Nice, in that deep squat. 10 more seconds. Keeping that back nice and straight. And time, rise up, rise up, rise up, shake it out as much as you need. I'm gonna go into one more round. 30 seconds again. Shake it out, shake it out. You can go into that squat. Fine, okay. Now, I'm gonna go the opposite direction this time, right? This time we opened the hands one way. I'm just gonna rotate in the opposite direction. Okay, back in. Again, feet slightly wider than the hips of the park. Toes, point straight ahead of your feet, parallel to one another, and drop down into that horse stance, as they call it, in Kung Fu. All right, backs up right. Again, open, thumbs first. And go. Open the hands, palms up. Close the hands, palms down. Twist and open. Twist and open. Try to keep that back nice and straight. Halfway there. Nice, hold, 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 hold. And five, four, three, two, and time. Rising up, rising up, rising up. Excellent. Grab a quick water break if you need again. And breathe. All right, so now what we're gonna do is go back lower to the ground. So you can use your yoga mat for this if you need, okay? Again, I'm gonna go bare minimum on the floor because again, what that does is make sure that I'm very careful and mindful with how I meet the ground, okay? So we're gonna go into our drills that help us better into our standing base, okay? So this is the uh, preliminary towards my standing base. I'm gonna go for my combat base, okay? My combat base is me being on the ground, okay? But not necessarily in a prone position, right? I'm in a position where I can defend myself when I'm actually on the ground, okay? So, going back. One foot behind one knee. 
and I use my momentum to rock me forward here to my combat base, okay? Notice here on my back foot, top of my foot to the ground. So I have foot, foot, and knee. A good triangular base right here that I can rise up on, okay? But instead of going down to my back, I'm just gonna still onto my butt, switch my feet, and rock back and forth up, okay? Let's go ahead and just jump right into it. I sit back nice and carefully on the outer glute, right? See, my body's at an angle right here, right? So it's less prone for me to land on my coccyx, my sacrum, keep my back safe. Again, no sound. We can do it slow, we can do it fast. Try to keep the hands to the head, switch feet, rolling over the shed. So a few more. And then we're going to switch. Switch, roll over the shin and rise up. Now, if you need to, use momentum to get you faster in that position, or even at all, that's fine as well. Even more so, if you need to use hands, okay, it's okay for now. Now, if we go fast and still no com no impact on the lower back, go for it. Nice. And time. Now what we're going to do is go to that same drill. Okay, but this time we're going to get a bit of a hip stretch. Okay, so I'm stretching forward, switch, and here, stretch. I'm trying to keep my front heel down on the ground. So I get a nice Achilles stretch on one side and a good hip stretch on the other, okay? Back down, move back so you can see my feet better, okay? Switch, hips forward, nice. And if at any point you wanna get more to your hip, I can raise that front heel off the ground and really reach forward with the hips. The control movements. Really get engaged in that core. Keep those hands up. Switch feet, one foot behind one knee. Roll over that shin, flatten that foot. Nice, now try to keep that heel down. Stretch the Achilles now. Stretch that lower calf. Front heel stays down, top of foot on the back leg. Excellent, and time. All right, so now with that in mind, we may as well go ahead and go into our actual technical stand-up, okay? So we did part of it earlier when we did our kick-throughs. So here, I go down, turn my back down. Pretend as though I got knocked down to the ground. For those who are in level one class, okay, my combat base, how I rise up safely. Okay, one foot behind one knee. Just so I know that one knee is on the ground, one foot is on the ground. This knee pointed downward at a 45 degree angle for me. I'm gonna lean towards that side as I rise up with my elbow, my hands. Other hand protecting my face. Remember, one's doing something, one's gotta protect, okay? So here and I'm in a very defensive position now, so I can't really attack just yet until I have a good base. So, and as I rise up, I'm gonna slide that hand in just so I have a better base. I don't want my hand too wide apart from my foot, making my base a little shaky. So now here, I rise up. So it's just my left foot and my right hand are the only things on the ground. Hand to my head. I thrust my kick forward, okay? This time my toes facing east, heel facing west. Not like my toes facing north, when I threw my front kick earlier, right? You can see in the rotation of my knee, you can't see my foot, okay? So what I'm doing here, with my foot sided out, in that fashion, I have more lateral area, which I can meet at someone's leg, keeping them away, and then I retract, 
my leg, extend my arm, and rise up. Okay, those are you that know the technical stand up. Let's keep going, right? So I call time. All right, so I'm down to the ground. Butt nice and low. I got pushed to the ground, but it meets first. I can break fall with my hands. My hands are going to be just outside of my hips range, chin to my chest, so there's no impact on my spine or head. And then from here, foot behind one knee, elbow, hand, slide the hand in, rise up, kick forward, and rotate those hips down as you extend the hand forward and the other way. Break fall. I got pushed to the ground, but I'm making very sure that my butt meets first. Break fall. Clean, one side. Up, extend, retract, extend. Make sure your gaze is still on where you're extending as you rise up safely. Push down, butt, break fall. Foot behind the knee. Rise up. Bring that foot from behind the knee. Extend forward. Extend back. Nice. Keep going. For those that are just laying this, what I want you to do is uh, just have a quick look at me here. Now, where, which, how do I decide which knee goes down and which knee goes up? Okay, that would be a good question. So, from right here, where I have these, wherever these two knees are pointing, right, whatever's in between that area is where my opponent should be. Okay, so they happen to start walking in this direction, then I'm going to switch. So when my knees are kind of like the uh, brackets of the direction in which they're going, right? They start going in this direction, then switch. So I'm closing them off, okay? So that's how we know where my, most of my vision is, right? That's in, in that direction. That's where I'm gonna go ahead and bring that knee. That's why my knee is a good point right here, that 45 degree angle relatively pointing to my opponent. Okay, keep going guys. Raise up and down. Two more. Look behind one knee, lean off to the side. Elbow hand slides in, so I have good height and base. So I kick forward and rise up. Last one. And time. Okay. Let's go back into those sprawls. Okay. Ten. Ready. And go. Down, kick feet back, and then back up. Okay, remember we're not just dropping down to the ground. Deep squat first, kick the hips back, up slow, hips high, and then back in. Bend those knees, really low in that deep squat first. Enough to meet the hands securely with the ground before you put the legs back. Feet hips with the part. Feet slightly wide and hits with the part as you stand up. Still two more. And time. Okay, let's go ahead and grab some water. Get back in there. Let's go ahead and rest in Seiza position. Okay, so don't remember Seiza. Tops the feet to the mat or the floor. My butt meets my heels. Okay, and let's come back in. This time I'm gonna go back to standing position, but also still keeping in mind as an earlier, we are still connected with the earth. So that's where my propulsion comes from. Okay, if it's for punches, through the foot, leg, hip, upper body, through the point of impact in the fists or even the kicks or knees, which we're about to go into right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is the same combination as before, but now we're going to add that front or thrust again, okay? That same thrust that we have in our straight punches. Okay, and when I say straight punch, that is relative. Okay, they come straight ahead, but my arm is not totally locked out at the elbow and straight. Okay, I want to keep a slight bend in my elbow just for safety measures first and foremost, making sure that I don't hyperextend my elbow. Okay, 
but that slight bend will meet for a better guard and better contact in the future, okay? But you know, there's always different rules for different situations. So this one here is just for safety in the meantime, okay? So we're going back to those same two punches, my jab and my cross, okay? I'm in my right stance, right foot's back, two o'clock. Okay, jab, cross, one, two. Let's go for that round kick, okay? Now here, what we can do to add a little momentum to that kick is I can step forward with my plant foot, okay? Now what does that do? As we showed earlier, when I step forward, right, what does it do with my other foot? My other heel begins to leave the ground, thus pushing more force through the ball of my foot and adding for more power momentum with my round kick, okay? Or even my front kick. So here, I step, kick. Now, as soon as I turn right back around to that 180, in that case, it's a 360, I'm gonna step again for that same side knee. Knee, come back into that stance, okay? One more time, jab, cross. One, two, here I step forward with the left, and kick the right, and step forward with that knee, okay? Now, my knee, Hips, I like to go with my hips internally rotated here, right? With my foot off to the side, which adds better extension. But if you don't have that dexterity just yet, you go foot just below the butt. As my hips go forward and my shoulders go back, notice my heel, but you can't see it too well, my plant heel leaves the ground, okay? And this is really good for a shadow box, and that's what this segment is, right? Shadow boxing. So here I'm using my imagination, right? But I also want to make sure I'm testing my balance. Okay, so raise that heel to the ground. Again, we lose balance first, we gain it later. Okay, jab cross. One, two, right round kick. Try to go for that full turn and then step into that right knee. Okay, with a half turn to those that don't have the full turn. Jab, cross, kick, step, knee. Try to make sure you bring that foot right back to that same position again. Okay, let's keep going. That same side. Jab, cross, one, two, step, round kick, and step, same side knee, come back into that stance. Jab, cross, round kick, come back, focus, centered, step into that knee. Now, when I throw my knees, keep going, guys, right? You'll keep going, and you'll just watch me as we go along. My foot is pointed when I throw my round kick or my knee, making sure they're nice and compact. My knee is like an arrow. Heel to the butt, hips forward, shoulders back, and I kind of bounce with the same side hand, but here, I just go ahead and bring my hand to my pocket, right? Just down to the pocket, and then bring it back. Jab, cross, right kick, arm comes all the way across, okay? And then for the knee, hand to the pocket, signifying hand to the neck, pulling the head down towards the knee. Jab, cross, brown kick. And knee. Nice. And time. Guess what? You're going to do the same thing on the opposite side this time. Okay. So now we're going to put it all together. Jab, cross, round kick into the knee. Jab, cross, turn. Knee. Bow. Jab, cross again. One, two, kick. And watch this. Switch knee. Bow back into my stance, okay? Now anytime I'm trying to go back into my stance, I wanna make sure that my lead foot comes back to where it needs to be, so I'm in the most comfortable position for myself, okay? So my jack cross, one, two, crown kick, and knee. One, two, my jack cross, switch kick, turn all the way around, and switch again, left back, right forward, that left knee, shallow step back, shallow step back. Okay, let's go, everything together. Starting with that jab cross. Round kick, knee, bow. One, two, switch kick. Back into your stance, switch knee. Bring that hand right to the pocket, come back into that stance. Okay, here we go. Kick, knee, jab cross. Go 180, that's fine. Switch from there. Knee. 
Jab cross. Kick. Jab cross. Oh, sorry. Kick to the knee, right? Let's do that over. Jab cross. One, two, kick. 180. Knee. Jab cross. Kick. 180. Switch knee. Left back, right forward. Momentum for that knee. Okay, three more. Jab cross. Step shallow, step shallow. Last one. And time. Ten jumping squats. Ready, ready, ready. Butts low to the ground. Hands high. Push the ground away as you go. Again, using your imagination. And go. One, two. Three, nice, four, big jump, soft landing. Seven, eight, nine, and time. Okay, let's go ahead back in that water break. Let's go ahead and grab some water. Back in in 30 seconds. Okay, bring it on home. Okay, those that are back early. Now we're gonna go into that same position that we were in earlier before we did our kick throughs, right? Kicking through, I'll go ahead and adjust the camera. You see more of the ground here. That's similar position, right? Uh, this time we're going in for a stretch. Okay, so instead of putting the balls of the feet on the ground, put the tops of the feet to the ground, I'm going to try and press the feet flat down, bringing my femur or my thigh bone perpendicular to the ground, and just meet my shoulders, shoulders width apart, feet and knees, hips width apart, and let's go for our cat cows. Okay, so my cat cow, my cat. It's me bringing my chin to my chest. Almost like I'm pushing with my chin, my spine up. All the while still keeping that connection. Knees, tops of the feet to the ground, all four corners of the hand. Now here, rotate my hips, but I'm not bringing my butt back. Just rotating the hips, bringing my belly down for the cow. Head up. Head down. Body up. Body down, head up. Make sure you're pushing through the scapula, right? Really push through the spine upwards and bow, bowing those hips downward. Good inhalation. So I go for my cat and exhale for the cow. Those arms nice, locked out. Remember that external rotation in your elbow, facing straight ahead of me, tops of feet to the mat, and time. Okay, stay in that position. Okay, now from here, I'll go ahead and stretch the wrist from here. Okay, so here I'm just going to go ahead, same position I was in, tops of feet to the mat, same external rotation in the shoulders. I'll just go in a circular fashion. Keep my arms as straight as I can. I'm going to draw a circle with my nose to the ground just ahead of my hands. Don't worry about where the hands are. Just center, triangulate your vision with your hands, and draw a circle. Stretching the wrists. Keeping the arms nice and straight. And switch directions. Circling the other way. Keeping the tops of the feet still to the mat. Keeping those fingers, wrists, all those extremities nice, healthy, and supple. All right, we'll go 
draw the same number one way as we did the other. And time. Okay. So now I'm going to go here to Cesar. Let's just sit in Cesar and just remember what Cesar is. But so my heels touch the feet to the mat. My posture is up, right? Just sitting there. Okay, one hand and the other. Draw the chin towards the chest, slight tilt in the head. Keep that spine nice and upright. And close the eyes or not. Let it close the eyes. To find presence. Find presence in your breath. Because that remains a constant in one's life, right? Without breath, there's no life. In through the nose and out through the mouth. And paying attention to your posture. Spine upright, chin slightly tilted forward. Really breathing into those back lungs, deep lungs. Not so much in the chest, right? You can begin to play with that as well. See the sensation each one gives. Keeping control on your inhalation and your exhalation. You're going to deepen your breath. You can allow that clearing any distractions, internal, external, internal chatter, external noise, accept it for what it is, and let it pass as everything does. Relax the brow, relax the jaw, breathing freely for our last few. Take and exhalation is yours. Not really too worried about time. It's funny presence in the breath. You can open your eyes. Taking your surroundings. 
good outlook, a new perspective. And always keep me mindful of the body, mind, and spirit. Thank you again for joining me for Martial Motion. See you again on Saturday.